chers amis, nous venons à l'année de la République de Jeanne à Katia Salle. Donc euh, voilà, nous venons à la quotidien à Katia Salle, nous venons à Bango Wana. Voilà, voilà, nous venons à la Katia Salle. Donc euh, je compte à la Katia Salle.
When Mr. Payne announced that he was leaving and we were searching for a new principal, we came together and we prayed. When the CCHS community lost coach Ron Slager and alumni Dylan Slager, we came together and we prayed. When we learned the condition of Mr. Dominic's son, Corbin, we came together and we prayed. And when we realized we might not pass pro face final after all, we came together and we prayed. And in the past year, we've done a lot of praying, especially for our own future. We prayed for the right school, the right scholarship, the right roommate, the right major, and the right future friendships. We have so much uncertainty about the things to come because it's all going to be brand new. You see, we've taken our last vocab quiz. We've gone to our locker for the last time. We ran our last mile in gym and still didn't get a passing time. We've seen Mr. Krakus' trademark outfit for the last time. And we've eaten our last Quest chicken bowl. And now we look ahead to the future. And although our diplomas are equally specific, we're going out in the world today as individual children of God. In the last four years, our, story have been, our stories have been very similar, yet in the next four, they're going to be so different. Whether you're going a whole three minutes away to Trinity Christian College, or you're going hours away to a school you actually want to go to, sorry, Trin, <laughs> or you're going into the military or the workforce, no matter what, we all have to turn to our Father in prayer. In our journey of growing to be better students and better Christians, I believe that the class of 2017 owes a ton of people a few thank yous. So allow me to write a few on behalf of our class. <clears throat> thank you, faculty, for teaching us that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and that adjectives modify nouns, but more importantly, praying for our futures, our futures as educators, as diplomats, as MLB stars, as leaders, and as pastors. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for worrying about us when we didn't text you where we were, and for being gracious when we were so dead wrong about so many things. Thank you for praying, thank you for praying for our safety and our ignorance. You guys are the best. Thank you, coaches and mentors, for teaching us to work hard and praying for our growth and our success. And lastly, Thank you, Scott, for cleaning up our mess. Sorry, it will not happen again. And although Bob Jovi is hopefully not any of our role models per se, he was right about one thing. We are indeed living on a prayer. In fact, our souls are depending on it. Those of us that took Christianity then and now learned a valuable lesson about prayer from Reformation leader Martin Luther. He said this, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. So my fellow graduates of the class of 2017, always remember to be faithful in prayer. Pray about your worries and your hopes, your struggles, the freshman 15. Thank God for what he's done, what he is doing, and what he will do in your life. And in the years to come, may we always remember the author and the creator of our faith, the one who's closing the CCHS chapter in our lives today and is beginning to write a new one tomorrow. Thank you. Before introducing our salutatorian and valedictorian, I would like for us to take a moment and thank a few people who have worked diligently to make this union so special. First of all, we need to give and we have to thank you to Mrs. Espinosa for all of her work behind the scenes. And seniors, I don't know where you would be, but I know where I would be if it wasn't for Mrs. Potter. So Mrs. Potter, we give you a huge round of applause for all the work you've done. We are a Christ-centered, learning community, intent on the restoration of God's world. One of the things that I love about CCHS is that it is a school where students have the opportunity to develop their God-given abilities. The two people we recognize this evening as our salutatorian and valedictorian are great examples of this, each in their own unique way. God gave them many gifts and abilities, and they did not dig a hole and bury their talents. Instead, they, thought, they sought out opportunity after opportunity to develop 
those gifts in and out of school, and in doing so, they honor God. Each is a wonderful representative of Chicago Christian High School and of the Lord. They embody all in an education focused on being Christ-centered and intent on restoring God's world entails. As a school, a student body, and a Christian community, we have been blessed by them, and they will be greatly missed. At Chicago Christian High School, as at many other schools, the valedictorian and salutatorian are selected strictly on the basis of a grade point average. I am constantly amazed at how our students are able to be involved in so many different areas while still maintaining the grade point averages that they do. If you think back to your high school experience, you will remember how difficult it is actually to do so. The two people we recognize tonight are extremely talented and represent well the diversity of gifts and interests. Just as Joshua did in the Old Testament, they have shown leadership in their class. They have taken positive steps to bring the Lordship of Christ into the forefront for peers and teachers alike. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. Like the prophet Daniel, they have demonstrated courage by daring to stand against the temptation of peer pressure and not compromise the Christian principles. When the king came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, my God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. And when Daniel was lifted from the dead, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. From Daniel 6. And like King Solomon, they have demonstrated wisdom, not so much by knowing all the right answers, well, they know most of them, but by the wise application of right answers to life situations. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, You have shown great kindness to David my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. From 2 Chronicles 1, verse 7 to 11. It is my great pleasure to announce and recognize as the of the class of 2017, Ken Mullis. In addition, she was involved in DECA for three years and in mock trial for four years. 
Abby was also a part of the theater program for freshman, sophomore, and junior years, and was the leader of our big sister program this year. Next year, Abby will be attending Baylor University in Waco, Texas. Congratulations, Abby, and thank you for your work, persistence, perseverance, and faithfulness to your God-given
thought that bathing and cleaning was optional. It was not uh, a, a, a natural thing for him. Some of you are worried about what's going to happen to your room when you're gone. When you come back and it be it's your mother's exercise room. When I left, my kids left and went home, I went to school, I told them that the uh, rent started the moment they graduated. And when they came back, they would have to pay rent. They'd be lucky if they had a room. These are scary times. Very scary times. But for these reasons, the verse that you've picked is very appropriate. The verse that you've picked for your graduation verse, your class verse, is very appropriate. It says, John 14, 27. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. When I read this passage and all of the verses around it, they say, well, as preachers, I should put it in context. When I read the context of this verse, I realized something very special. I realized that Jesus was giving a commencement address to his disciples. You see, he was preparing his disciples for his departure. They had been in Jesus' leadership development program for the last three and a half years, and now it was time for them to graduate. They were about to go out on their own for the first time, and they were scared, just like you. You're about to go out on your own for the first time, and you're probably going to see it. He promises them, though, that he is not going to leave them as he called them as orphans. He says, you've been my children for a while, and I'm not just going to leave you alone to fend for yourself. He had been talking to them, if you read the passage, you'll see, he had been talking to them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And I'm pretty sure they really didn't have any idea what he was talking about. But he had been talking to them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And he told them how the Spirit would guide them and would direct them and would always be with them forever. And how he would remind them of the things that he had taught them over those three and a half years. As he was about to leave them, he made this promise to them in verse 27. He says, I'm going to give you my peace I give to you. He promises, though, a different kind of peace. A peace that is superior, a superior brand to the peace than what, than what the world offers. You see, the world offers a peace that is temporary. Here today, gone tomorrow. The world offers a peace that is unstable, a peace that is dependent upon the absence of problems. When we don't have problems, we have peace. When there, is no, when there are no ways, we can be at peace. But Jesus promises them a different kind of peace. He promises them shalom. He promises them a peace uh, that is not based upon the unrealistic prospect of never having a problem. That world does not exist. He doesn't promise them a peace that is based upon circumstances, but a peace that is based upon the absolute confidence that comes from the presence and the power of God. From the fact that God is with them and the fact that God is the baddest man on the planet. <laughs> that there is nobody that can stand with them. I didn't just let me, let me go away from my script here for a second. I just have to tell you a quick story. And I think about when I was 10 years old and my mother got me married. And she, met, she married into this family that had six kids. And one of, my, one of those kids was my brother. Was this, this young man was my brother. And he was a phenomenal athlete. He never, ever lost in anything. I had, a trouble, I had trouble spelling basketball, and he never lost at basketball. And he would always pick me for the seat. Always. And when I stood on the sidelines, I was always scared of being the last one picked, if I was picked at all. So I would stand there, and I would be afraid. But Larry would always call my name. And when Larry called my name, it was amazing how much it transformed me. Because you see, when I stood there in my own I just stood there and waited, waited to be embarrassed. But the moment that Larry said, give me Jason, all of a sudden I was transformed into Michael Jordan. It's like, let's go bring it on, baby. We got this. We didn't want it was because of who I was with. 
It was because of the one who had chosen me. And I want you to know that that is what you have. That is the power that you have with you. You have been chosen. You may have been set on the sidelines of life by many other things, but I need you to know that you have been chosen by God himself. You are on his team, and you got this. You got this. You need to know that. That was extra. Let me get back to my notes. <laughs>